All right, so as I mentioned last time, they're working on a fiberglass wing mock-up as well. And here it is. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another Detroit Speed Project Shop update vlog. I'm here with the man, Matt Butts. What's up? So we're gonna go through, look at everything that's been going on for the past month. All right, Matt, what's new with Simon Chevelle? So Paul's been working on uh, some of the body fitment type stuff. Got the doors on it. Got them lined up and gapped to the uh, quarters and rocker. This was a really nice original car. Um, and these are the original doors, so they lined up and fit really good, really minimum work to get, you know, a darn near perfect gap. So it's definitely what you like to see when you're doing one of these. And then there's some body work's been going on in the trunk too, right? Yep, yeah, I've been doing some work back here. So we uh, raised the trunk floor here uh, for a couple of reasons. You know, a lot of these cars, big horsepower engines, you know, the fuel economy is not so great. So we want to make sure we got a good size gas tank in this thing. So to do so, Paul cut the trunk floor, raised it, um, and that also helped with some of the clearance we did for the, the rear frame rails we built and everything. So if you look under here, you know, we gained, we gained about two and a half inches of height to the trunk floor. So that allows us to get a, a bigger tank in and then also have it up in the car. So that way when this thing's sitting on the ground, you don't see the fuel tank hanging below the bumper. It'll just be a real clean finished look. How many more gallons we be able to have? Uh, so not sure tank. right now. Yeah. Um, you know, if we could end up with like an 18 gallon tank or something, that'd be pretty cool. A lot of these cars end up 12, 14, um, but a little bit more would be better. And then, awesome. uh, got the deck lid on. This was one of the few pieces from the factory body. Um, they was pretty rusted, not worth using. So reproduction deck lid. The fit was really, really close right out of the box. So, um, you know, definitely one of the times you get lucky here. Yeah, really. So it looks pretty, pretty good. So. Between the, the trunk and the lower quarter patches, you know, all the other metal in the car is gonna be original, so really excited about that. All right, so we've got a pretty cool new interior design. Uh, see all these little dots in here? Those are actually, what are they, like 3D tracking points? Uh, yeah, so they're, uh, they're reference points for our 3D scanner. So uh, a week or two ago, we um, assembled the interior, scanned the whole thing together, and then uh, pulled the seats out, scanned them individuals, scanned the dash. So what that does is it gives us a full 3D model of the interior. And then uh, from that point, we'll send that model off to the interior shop so they can start working on the, uh, the overall design, door panels, um, dash design, and stuff like that. So it allows, allows them to get a head start on the, uh, that aspect of the build while we're still going on the car here. All right, so what's going on with the, the K5 Blazer? Uh, so a lot of stuff's been happening. Uh, we've had some more engine parts show up. Uh, Poly mid-rise intake mocked up on it. Our leaf spring showed up. It's a 10-leaf progressive pack. Those things are thick. Got some spring from uh, Off-Road Designs did them for us. So, you know, overall this truck's going to be lifted roughly two inches. So this is a more progressive rate. Um, gives us the lift and then we also moved the pin location uh, to help center the wheel in the wheel arch. Mm. Uh, so I think we moved it back like three quarters of an inch because anytime you lift one of these, uh, the axle actually moves forward a little bit. And then Bruce has been jamming on the inside here. If anybody's familiar with these trucks, ever ridden in one, the back seat is basically bolted down in a truck bed, like for all <laughs> intents and purposes. So if you sit in the back and you're an adult, your knees are basically up towards your chest. Um, and in the later model blazers, I believe they they changed the floor stamping uh, to something like this. So what Bruce did was came in, uh, cut this section of the floor out, you know, cause it was, it was level from here to here. And so he actually dropped this down to create a footwell. So anytime uh, the customer has passengers, it's be a little bit more comfortable for them. So you get get a more relaxed seating position. Your legs and feet aren't jammed up into you, so. Yeah, being someone with long legs, I, re I really appreciate this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, if you had to ride more than like five minutes, you would definitely enjoy that. Yeah. So yeah, that, that part's about wrapped up. Then we'll start mounting seats. Um, got a set of uh, six gen uh, 1LE Recaros for it. Uh, so they're power, heated, cooled. So we'll use those for the front, and then we will modify 
the six gen rear seats uh, onto a fold and tumble Jeep seat frame. Oh, nice. So that way, if you want to throw a bunch of stuff in the back, you can dump the seat forward and it will flip all the way up to just behind the front seats. So then you'll have all the cargo space. So oh, nice. you, know, you need to throw tables, chairs, coolers, whatever in the back of this thing. So this thing's got a lot of like parts from other vehicles I've noticed. Like even like the, yeah. the the frame and the suspension and everything being from a Tacoma and we've got Jeep parts going in here, that's, that's cool. Yeah, it's like yeah, an I mean, off-road Frankenstein almost. Kinda, I mean, yeah, anytime you're building cars, it's, it's really nice to utilize all the cool stuff um, from the different manufacturers. Right. You know, they've all got their, their kind of niche products and um, you know, there's there's nothing better than integrating them into the old cars so yeah. all right so i posted up on instagram uh about a couple of weeks ago some photos of what mark's been doing to the daytona here so he's been working on all the the bracketry all the mounting hardware for the wheel wells and of course the fiberglass front clip so matt kind of walk us through a little bit exactly what's been going on kind of process mark's been going through for this so we started out got the car up here on the plate uh, got the front end kind of square, leveled, and then started with the uh, inner fenders here. So decided to build them from scratch out of sheet metal, uh, 18 gauge steel. So what these will do is these will actually be uh, some of the structure for the fenders as far as mounting and everything. We mocked it up with a uh, 19 by 10 and a half front wheel with a 295 tire, but. We might even shoot for possibly like a 305 up front just to have a, wow. a good good meat on it. Then you can see all the structure, all the ducting. So the same thing. This is all sheet metal. Everything from here forward is aluminum. And so it's mounting structure for the front bumper and then it also is the ducting and shroud for the radiator. Oh, so nice. that'll help help funnel all the air directly through the core, uh, the radiator, you know, the top of it will be here and it'll be laid back to that cross member. So it'll be laid down pretty far. Definitely got to help, you know, maximize the efficiency. Yeah. The engine makes a thousand horsepower. So and and, as much air as it can get. Yeah. Anything you can do to help the cooling capacity. And then he's got a, uh, just starting on mocking up our headlight assemblies here. So, uh, these are all done in CAD, uh, sheet metal press broke parts it's got uh, morimoto um, the by led projectors inside of it so right now he's just starting rough mock-up see the foil tape here just kind of holds it holds it in place to start trying to get an idea on how to build brackets how to support them and mount them all right so as i mentioned last time they're working on a fiberglass wing mock-up as well and here it is so they pretty much do the same process with this as they did with the front clip, right? Like it's all like 3D printed and molded and everything. Uh, so this one was not 3D printed. Uh, all the molds were CNC routered from okay. foam. And so uh, they laid up the wing. It's made in uh, several different pieces and then bonded together. But ultimately, uh, once it's finished in carbon, it will be a one piece unit just like it says. Then how much shorter is this wing from the factory wing? Um, it's probably a good foot shorter. Really? We kept it uh, pretty even with the roof line. Uh, it is laid back more, but the cool part is, is once the wing is installed, the quarter panels will actually get flared uh, roughly two inches in steel. And then it'll be a flush transition into the wing. So you'll have just a nice tight seam here and then the rest of the wing will come back and it actually creates an open cavity, uh, like an air duct feature between the wing and the quarter panel. So once you see this car from the back, the total amount that the car is widened will be uh, the outside edges of the wing. Oh wow, so it's gonna look like it's gonna have a lot wider stance from the rear. Yeah, and you even oh, sighting cool. up the front, you can see you know, the, oh, rear, yeah. the rear will get that much wider as well. And then also we have a full, that would be a full carbon diffuser as well. Uh, that will finish out, you know, the bottom of the car and uh, flush out to the edges of the wing where it meets the bottom of the quarter panel there. Oh, nice. The rear marker lights will go away. It'll get welded up and then, of course, the wing will overlap it so yeah. you wouldn't be able to see it anyway. We're not planning on, like, 
moving them somewhere else or anything? Just no, yeah, ninety percent of the customers that we build these cars for, everybody likes to do away with the marker lights. Yeah. So but we keep them on a handful of builds, but for the most time, that stuff gets cleaned up. You know, you don't you don't want to flare it just right here in the quarter um, section only because we don't want it to look really exaggerated, at least localized. So you know, to get two inches or so here. Um, Mark's going to start probably about the middle of the door and so all this will get split and it will get progressively pulled out all the way back so it'll definitely look exaggerated but the goal is to not see the actual transition where it happens. Yeah. When we get farther along in the build stuff like these air ducts and the front grill once it gets cut out um, more than likely all of this will be designed and 3D printed all the inserts. So. Making good progress on it though. We're we're excited. We'll we'll get it off the plate here probably in the next uh, week or two. So we'll get to see it down on the floor, get a little bit better idea for how it's going to look. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we are in the body shop now, looking at Deb's Firebird. The shell is out of the booth. It's all painted. The doors are mocked up. Um, they've had a lot going on with this one in the past month. Uh, Jason's been. Kind of working around getting all the wiring the speakers set up and now he's working on the engine right now just kind of making sure a lot of that stuff is is fitting correctly and you know is going to work once the car is finally assembled so i'll let matt kind of walk us through and find out exactly what jason's been up to over here so like cody was saying uh, we've got Deb's firebird down here to the assembly side um, all the parts at this point have been painted so we're just now getting into assembly phase jason had a lot of the car kind of pre-wired uh, before it went to the body so at this point now we can start final install installing all of the wiring that he was working on uh, you can kind of see under the dash and along the rockers and everything so this is all stuff that was that was done while the car was still in bare metal whole rear tail light harness fuel pump stereo all that stuff's already done um, ethan went through the last week or so and did all the dynamat we started with uh one of their pre-cut kits for the second gym and uh, once we did the pre-cut kit and then we went in with the universal stuff and kind of filled in some of the gaps in between and then of course taped all the seams so it's kind of the first step before you can really start laying down all your all your wiring and harnesses and stuff like that on all of our builds we do um, depending on the amount of electronics and stereo we always do a handful of mega fuses uh, so you have like your main battery feed, you have an alternator feed, the Holly has its own fuse, so the whole car is whole car is protected in case anything ever happens with any of the main power cables. Yeah, I know he's got the tail lights wired up too. Yep, mounted yeah. up. Mounted, wired, we tested them the other day. So they turned out really good. Blacked out the bezels, did a real light smoke on the lenses. They've got LED panels inside. I think we went with the uh, the dapper lighting uh, panels in them, so they look really good lit up. And then up front, we've got kind of the engine stuff going together. Um, the customer really liked the smooth KTEC valve covers, so we did those. And then uh, I want to say Josh fabricated uh, these fuel rail covers, so just aluminum sheet metal. TIG welded body works. and so that covers covers the rails and covers some of the harness. Um, so yeah, cleans it up a little bit. Yeah, it cleans it up. You know, we don't ever really get into like full intake covers or anything like that, but it just cleans it up. And then uh, we remote mounted the coil packs, so they all mount down along the block. There will be four coils right here, so all the plug wires stay down low. Oh, nice. It'll be like that on both sides. Yep. Same spot. Yep. So just keep, you know, when you pop the hood, the whole top of the engine package will just be really nice and clean. Not much stuff on the firewall, so it's it's gonna be a really really clean engine day. Last but not least, we have the Riviera. It's been a while since we've talked about this one, but we've got a lot going on with it here in the next over the past couple weeks, and then here in the next couple weeks as well. So Matt, where are we with the Riviera? Uh, so like you said, last couple weeks to a month, uh, Austin and Josh have been really digging hard on it, so been getting some of the some of the other exterior panels wrapped up in paint uh, got the the inner door structures done uh, the outer door skins are in final epoxy ready to be wet sanded and painted um, 
if you're not familiar with Buick Rivieras, pretty interesting design. The door structure and door skin actually bolt together. So most of your cars, you know, the door comes off, it's one piece, it's crimped on the skin to the structure. Whereas these, in order to put your door together, your window regulators, your latches, all that stuff, you actually put the door structure on first, put all of your window regulators, motors, and everything in, and then the door skin gets installed last. So I guess that made it a little bit easier if you need to replace something or... I don't know, I wouldn't say necessarily easier, it's just, it's a different design that vehicle process. Yeah. Um, so it makes it a little bit interesting for us as far as the, the order of operations we do. So we got the structure done and now they'll get fully assembled. And then once the skins are final painted and polished, we'll install those on. So right now we had to go ahead and put these on to get them uh, rough aligned so we could start assembling them. And then from there, once the doors get finished up, the fenders are in primer. They'll get epoxied, wet sanded, and painted, and then we'll start to assemble the front clip. And then in the meantime as well, we've been working on a lot of the uh, interior chrome parts uh, that have chrome and black painted details. Um, and a lot of the interior pieces are painted a brown to match the carpet. And it a, lot of the, a lot of the interior pieces are still like the original pieces, aren't they? Yeah, basically the whole interior is either original or fabricated uh, to create a cleaner, um, just more um, uniform look, you know? So the center console, for example, it looks OEM original. Obviously we raised the tunnel in this car and the factory console wouldn't fit. So Josh Scratch built a center console and it looks like a Riviera console 100%, but it's actually totally hand fabbed. Uh, it's cleaned up, it's refined. So, you know, overall the interior will be stock appearing, but extremely refined and detailed. And again, it's kind of the overall theme for the car with the, the nail head look to the engine. Uh, it's just, it's all those little details that make the package. So if you've never watched one of our vlogs before, this is actually an LS7? Uh, LS3? It's LSX. LSX, but... Uh, it's a tall deck block. They've actually fabricated the valve covers to look like the old nail head. Yep. So it looks, you open the hood, your first thought is, oh, that's an old nail head motor. A little bit more investigation, it, yeah. you realize it is not. Yeah, once it gets the air cleaner on, the air cleaner mimics one of the factory styles. It's really um, going to sell it. Yeah, coil packs relocated to the rear center, so once that's all covered, it'll look like it had a distributor in it. Yes. The engine is fully, fully wired as it sits, so, you know, really any of the fuel injection stuff is really hidden very nicely, so it, it should look pretty true to form when it's uh, said and done. Yeah, so here are the door panels the outside skins that he's got in progress Austin and Josh are working on. Yep. So these things have been, you know, they had been sandblasted early on. Uh, they've been body worked, primed several times, blocked. And then this is uh, the final stage, um, which would be an epoxy sealer. So they've been wet sanded. They've got a little bit further to go with the wet sanding. And then they're ready for a uh, base coat, clear coat. And again, talking about how these things come apart, we actually bought a second set of interior uh, door structures so that while going through the bodywork and paint phase, these skins are supported because they're pretty flimsy when they're out on their own. So that's so why we've got a second set of these just to be able to help handle them uh, while they've been in the body shop. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for this month's uh, project shop update vlog. Uh, we'll be back next month to kind of update y'all on everything that's going on and you know follow us on social media facebook and instagram at detroit speed if you have any questions about anything give us a call shoot us an email dm on instagram or facebook and we'll see you next month see you